who's uh, running late. I guess I'll just jump in. But uh, for everyone that's uh, that's on uh, on this webinar uh, that's attended right now, uh, thank you for joining us uh, today. We're really excited. Uh, Solid experts were really excited to discuss the uh, the Nexa 3D brand uh, and the new partnership that we've uh, we've joined forces with. Um, I think Nexa 3D for us was uh, was a technology that was of leading edge, and as a company of innovation that we we sell uh, a lot of 3D innovative products, uh, whether it's on software or hardware. Uh, we felt that Nexa was uh, the perfect brand and the perfect fit for us, uh, just based on uh, the, it's not a conventional 3D printer that we see in terms of uh, resin 3D printing. And we're going to probably deep dive a lot more into as a reseller and also as a customer of 3D printing as well, because uh, we do um, 3D printed uh, parts uh, as well for, for customers that are locally. It's not our core business, but we do um, have uh, individuals that need one-off parts or quick, uh, uh, quick iteration. So we try to help out and um, we're going to get into some of the customer experience that we've had as, uh, and as with resin printing and what distinguishes Nexa versus anything else on the market. So we're really excited to, to be discussing that. Um, so what's on the menu today? Uh, on my end, it's gonna be talking about why Nexa, uh, some of the uh, potential applications, uh, just an overview of uh, some of the uh, equipment that we offer here at Solid Experts. Why Solid Experts as a 3D printing partner overall, uh, our team, and then after that, I'm going to pass the, the ball over to uh, the head of content marketing, which is uh, Sean Sean Miley. Uh, he's going to go a lot more into uh, detail in terms of the secret sauce of what drives the innovation of of um, Nexa 3D and uh, just a bit some of the customer success stories that they've had and the applications that they're using it for and uh, also some of his his experience with 3d printing as well he's been in the game for a long time so he'll get the bit to tell a bit about that and maybe sean uh before i just pass it over maybe you can also elaborate a bit on uh, a little bit of a back-end story on nexa for the folks that aren't familiar uh, that are attending and maybe not familiar with the Nexa brand, uh, just a bit how this come about, what's and uh, some of the individuals that got together and how long they've been doing this and just a backstory. So, uh, Sean. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So first off, I want to want to say thanks uh, to James and and the team at Solid Experts for having me on. Uh, I'm super excited to be partnered with Solid Experts. Uh, you guys. Have been around for a long time have a lot of really great customers and hopefully uh they can uh, learn a little bit about nexa 3d um so yeah my background is in the additive space i've been in the industry for about 10 years but i just joined nexa 3d last year um so i've almost been there been here for a, a year now um before i joined nexa 3d i was predominantly in, in more of the filament side of the industry so i think a lot of a lot of people, you know, I'd say more people are probably familiar with filament 3D printing than resin 3D printing these days. Um, it's just generally more accessible. And, you know, I think people are just more can wrap their minds around it a little bit easier than than how resin works. But um, I've been, really been blown away by the technology since I started. Um, and that, to be to be honest, I didn't know you could do some of the things you can do um, with yeah. 3D printing until I got here. But um, but yeah, next to 3D. Uh, it's, we've been around since about 2016, um, as you know, a few person startup, um, fast forward, I guess to 2018, 2019, that's when the first NXE series kind of first commercialized 3d printer came out. Um, so that was like the original one of what you see standing behind James there. Um, now we fast forward to last year, we came out with. The, the pro and and we'll talk about some of these printers um but yeah our ceo avi reichenthal um he used to be the ceo of 3d systems back in the day so you know ton of ton of experience from our leadership team and 
they saw the opportunity with this new technology coming out for you know this ultra fast high throughput 3d printing um you know was a real game changer honestly um and we'll talk about what we mean by ultra fast and high throughput and and you know some of the potential that that unlocks for some of our customers too so yeah thanks for thanks for uh, letting me join you guys and and let's get it let's get it yeah absolutely looking forward uh looking forward to discussing more uh, about Nexo with you today, Sean. So I guess we'll just uh, deep dive into where you've done the a bit of the menu uh, for the viewers uh, that have tuned in today. Uh, a little bit about Solid Experts. You might be already a customer with us, or maybe you're just tuning in uh, because you want to learn more about the Nexo brand. Uh, essentially, why Solid Experts as your you know 3D print as you jump into your 3D printing uh, venture. I mean, we've been around, we've been resellers for SolidWorks for the last uh, 25 years. We've also worked, uh, we're also a reseller of Katia. Uh, so we're, you know, we have our hands and our tentacles in pretty much every uh, industry, whether it's aerospace, uh, automotive, uh, industrial equipment, end user consumers, uh, packaging. Uh, we're into virtually everything. So. Our team, uh, we have a concept, we have engineers here, we provide consulting services. So we really understand the concept of design to part when it comes to 3D printing. So a lot of our partners, we're not just troubleshooting your printer, we're not just providing you consumables and fast response in terms of training and answering questions on the printer, but as well as a partner in terms of your product line, if you're looking for a team to help in terms of optimizing your designs for 3D printing, or essentially uh, just simply um, enhancing your product line as a whole, uh, we do collaborate uh, with you on all fronts. So uh, solid experts here, uh, we're big into software, and also, as you can see, we're really expanding into 3D printing uh, as well. And so now, essentially, I think a bit about next, uh, I think uh, Sean, did it justice uh, before about uh, their beginnings, uh, where they've come from. I think there's a strong uh, background there with Nexa 3D, the individuals that uh, were at 3D Systems, uh, you know, started up Nexa. So there's a, a vast, a wealth of experience already in uh, this field. And this is why as uh, a reseller, we're looking to offer pristine products uh, to our customers, things that are reliable, that are accessible and that can deliver uh, their needs and their demands. And so for us, when we're looking at 3D printing, whether it's FDM or powder or resin printers, we really wanna have something that's of quality, that works, uh, that's reliable, and that can really allow the flexibility of, of uh, allowing our customers to innovate uh, to pivot uh, their business uh, rapidly, to have quick uh, iterations, and especially now more than ever in the economy we're in. And the last few years, we've seen you know supply chains and just uh, the lead times accumulating. And now you know we've come across a, a technology that's of leading edge, uh, that's accessible for the for the masses, especially if you're in business, uh, if you have a project that you need resin printing. This is this is a no-brainer with, with Nexa. So I think one of the things at the core that really stood out to us when getting into this partnership with Nexa, uh, because we do have experience with resin printing. And so one of the things that really stood out in terms of 3D printing as a whole is speed and accuracy. And so with speed and, and accuracy, one of the things that a lot of people in 3D printing, uh, whether it's FDM, they want to have to know uh, if the printers can go faster. And sometimes when you play with the parameters or you find 3D printers that do claim that they're faster, there's always a catch behind that. And usually what happens is accuracy is neglected. Uh, however, with the Nexa 3D, you get the best of both worlds. You get something that is fast and accurate. And so what comes to mind when you have this kind of speed, obviously the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to resin printing is rapid prototyping. It's having the capability of doing complex surfaces and geometries and being able to do really quick iterations for your clients, 
uh, having quick turnover where traditional 3D printers would normally take maybe a day to do an iteration, uh, maybe a couple of days, depending on the size of your part. Whereas with the Nexa, you are gaining exponential uh, time in terms of productivity where you can go vary anywhere between three to six iterations a day, depending on the size of your part, obviously. But we're seeing an absolute increase in productivity when it comes to rapid prototyping, whether it's R&D, just having, you know, we'll talk about resins a bit uh, later, but having that versatility as well in terms of developing your products, uh, time to market, and really what stood out for us uh, with the Nexa 3D is end-use production uh, in terms of uh, having an end-use part. One of the limitations that we've seen in the past uh, using other brands of resin printers, whether it's Form Labs, they they provide you know, an array of materials that are good and reliable and good for prototype, rapid prototyping, but there were certain limitations, whether it was uh, in terms of the speed, but not necessarily the speed, but having an end use part. Uh, what comes with, you know, SLA technology is you're having a resin that's manipulated with UV light. And so a lot of our projects and our customers' dreams uh, went to the tubes or went, went out were just incomplete because when we would dive into a, a case where they wanted to do an end use part for their customer well unfortunately the part was maybe not uv resistant so what would happen is you'd have maybe discoloration or fragility of the part so it, it limited the applications the potential behind it so with sla printing there was these great potentials however the limitations in terms of resins and now with Nexa, they have certain resins that you can have end use parts that are not only solid, reliable, but that you can use as an end use part that are UV resistant. And one of those parts is the XPP405 uh, resin that we've been you know, dabbling a lot with in terms of people in the field of knee braces and doing insoles. So people that are out and about on their daily, uh, daily routine exposed to UV light. This is something that uh, was a limitation for us prior. And so having a resin printer that can do that, it's a, an ROI that can be justified very rapidly. And not only that, but it can allow your business to pivot in a completely different direction in terms of business model for production, in-house production, instead of committing to outsourcing and having to commit the larger volumes that maybe you might not be able to uh, get or deliver and you might have an overflow of inventory, but now you have that flexibility and accessibility with a printer like Nexa. Uh, so that was one of the things, uh, some of the uh, things that you know really stood out for us uh, in terms of, as a resin printer. And uh, we mentioned you know, the UV resistance. Uh, also what comes to mind with Nexa is the versatility uh, in terms of resins, uh, you know, you have medical grade resins, you have rapid prototyping resins, uh, you have flexible uh, resins for resin parts, uh, you have medical grade parts. Uh, so you can create parts for molds, for functional parts, end use parts that are solid, reliable, which in the past, uh, I think Sean will go in a little bit more depth in terms of the evolution of SLA printing, but it was, you know, made for rapid prototyping. And so for us, this was a really good standout. And so when we talk about quality, I'm a little far from the camera, but if I get if I get a little closer here, here are some of the parts that I was kind of talking about. Uh, so in terms of just, we look at organic shapes and, and just comp surfaces. If I just put this close to the camera, maybe you can see a bit of the, the quality of these parts that you get with the Nexa printer. And so we talk about also, you know, rubber-like materials that we can create. Very resistant. And then also, if you're looking for something with a little bit more of a smooth surface finish, precision, uh, we have that as well. So.
Nexa has uh, quite quite a, a library of materials, and they continue to uh, grow their their offering, where they have partnerships with some of the best uh, material engineers and manufacturers in the world, which are Hankel and BASF. So they have a partnership where they're continuing to grow and meet the demands of the marketplace. Um, when we talk about versatility with Nexa, we also talk about a bit of the software capabilities. And so Nexa brings the best of both worlds in terms of a reliable printer with a nice controlled environment of having consistent, smooth parts, and also at the same time, allow you with their software, they have a software that's included with their printer, but as well, you can have an upgrade license to their pro version where you can have an open resin uh, program. So this will permit you to have the best of both worlds where you'll have Nexa's reliable, uh, you're not just tied down to one brand. You can expand your horizons into, into other brands as well if you choose to. Um, and if you're looking for a specific resin that maybe you want to test that maybe Nexa might not have or might have in the future, you are not closed off to those options. And as well, it will permit you to, for production purposes, uh, do stacking on the Z axis as well. So if you're looking to do volume production, uh, this is an added value. Uh, maybe Sean can go into a little bit more depth in terms of some of the nuances of the softwares and capabilities as well. Uh, another you know, standout for us was uh, the fact that we could not only diversify our business into we were really honed in on manufacturing and just kind of industrial. And, and so in terms of the dental field, it was an industry that we really haven't really considered in the past until now. Um, we've had partnerships where it's the likes of Form Labs or other printers, resin printers, where there's a lot of direct selling to the consumer. And we've had a lot of our customer base in this territory that have come to us and one of the things that they brought to our attention was, is that they were looking for local support. So they're not necessarily honed in on becoming technicians of 3D printing. They just want to have a print, a 3D printer that they can just press go and dive right in and just produce quality products for their customers without, you know, breaking a sweat and thinking about things. But things these printers are mechanical so there are times where there's troubleshooting and sometimes it's a little out of their depth and having to contact directly a manufacturer becomes kind of a challenge and also it, it delays their process so they felt neglected on that sense to not have access to someone local so with nexa they allow we're collaborating with nexa where they allow a partner like us to be able to troubleshoot industries that normally would have to work direct with the manufacturer can now work with us. And we're very accessible in terms of sending resources to, to uh, troubleshoot or on the phone or a video call. So these are things that you know really open the door, not only for us, but for our customers, it just allows a better 3D printing experience overall. Um, so these again are all you know points that we found appealing with the uh, the Nexa. And so before I get into the product line, another thing that you know uh, we kind of noticed with our experience, we talked about you know reselling printer resin printers, but as well in terms of being a customer. Uh, one of the things that we noticed about the Nexa 3D. Um, was the, uh, I guess you could say the management of inventory as a whole for us, it, it just seemed a lot more appealing um, because of other resin resins that we used in the past uh, with other companies, um, the, the lifespan of their engineering resins was anywhere between 10 and 36 weeks. And not only that, but you had to procure a resin tank and then purchase the resin that was dedicated to that resin tank. So there's a price tag behind that. I mean, for our Canadian clients, you're looking at anywhere between six and $700 Canadian. 
and an American, that would be you know, close to 500, 500 USD, 150 for, for a resin tank. And then depending on the resins, it could vary, you know, it could be 350, like it could be $400 USD. So, and if you're opening a resin and you're doing a one-off part, and you don't know the next time you're gonna be utilizing that resin, the problematic is that you only have 10 weeks to use it up. If not, you're pouring it out and you have to get rid of it because it's expired. And so for us managing inventory, I can tell you that we've poured away thousands of dollars in terms of, of, of managing that type of inventory because we had a client down the street come to us and want us to print a one-off part. So we opened say a flexible material for a particular application so it was interesting to have that uh that fast offering but the problematic was it was the management because then after that within maybe six months that same customer would come to us but then our resin expired so then we would have to maybe open up another one or just simply say you know it's just not it's not it's not profitable in terms of a business model so with Nexa, one of the, the, the primary things is, is the lifespan of the resins. The resins are um, a lifespan to be conservative is a year. And if you really want to push it, there's certain certain cases could go up to two years. So there's a lot more peace of mind in terms of managing your inventory. And then when it comes to resin tanks as well, the membranes, the lifespan as well, because you're continuing to have to interchange or change certain resin tanks because the lifespan, the wear and tear on it becomes that you have to change it. Whereas the lifespan of a Nexa membrane, you're looking at anywhere between 25,000 and 50,000 print layers. Um, so for us, that was very appealing as well. And for an offering for our customers so that we know when they embark, uh, they're not always having to to put a price tag on consumables and building up those bills. So although some of these printers might be appealing at the entry level price, when it comes to managing the inventory, that price tag can build up real quick. So we, we saw a little bit more stability in terms of managing your inventory and being a lifespan of resins, lifespan of membranes. and you might have to clean these, these membranes, but I would rather pay a technician 20 minutes to do a quick cleanup and be able to um, uh, uh, change a resin onto the membrane uh, versus having to you know, pour out thousands of dollars worth of resins uh, on other models that we've used in the past. So it's, 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 uh, it was something that really stood out for us as well in terms of, uh, in terms of the uh, experience that we were looking for to, for us and for our customers. Um, I think uh, before I pass it on to Sean, I just wanted to maybe just touch base on some of the product line that you kind of see behind me here. Uh, a bit of the uh, printer models that we have here at Solid Experts. So if you want to work on a file with us, uh, we can validate concepts for you. We can quantify uh, the costs, uh, cost evaluation, the time, uh, the speed of these printers so that you can see firsthand, you know, what kind of turnover you're going to have with these parts. And uh, the ROI is pretty astounding so far on some of the files that we've been, we've been working on. Um, so if we start with some of the printer lines that we have, we have in the back, we have right behind me, which is the NXC 400 Pro. Uh, this one is something, uh, it's 10.7 inches by 6.1 by 15.7 on the height. And so this is really something if you're looking to do larger scale parts, if you're looking to do production uh, on a larger scale and you're really scaling up your production line, uh, this is a printer that's highly recommended. Uh, they put an emphasis on the ZX because of the fact that you can do stacking as well in terms of your your production and what's interesting um, i guess sean uh, obviously working with fdm printers and now with these resin printers when you're doing production when people ask you know 
if I put four parts versus one part on an exa, does it really affect the, the print time? Not really. The print time is going to stay relatively the same versus an FDM printer where you're you're going to be having that nozzle switching uh, to each part, and so your print time, you know, doubles and triples depending on you know how many parts you want to put on that print table. Um, so that's what's appealing. So we have the best of both worlds: speed and resins that are capable of coming in the hand of end use customers, and knowing that you can have peace of mind of putting your stamp of approval and having that warranty uh, to cover uh, your parts uh, to your customers, you know, based on, you know, reliable resonance, which in the past is, was a bit of a challenge. Uh, and so now if we move, we move to the NXE 200 Pro and the NXD 200 Pro, um, essentially very similar to the 400. Uh, predominantly what changes in terms of the build size is the height, is the ZX. It's a little bit lower. And also, maybe some of you are looking, uh, you see in terms of the NXD, it is the uh, dental version. So we do offer dental printers as well. So anybody who's tuned in, who's in the dental industry, uh, you have uh, printers that are dedicated specifically to uh, dental uh, resins, which actually I didn't get an opportunity to maybe show up close, maybe some of our dental parts that we have here uh, before I continue on. I'm just going to go here, getting closer. Maybe you can get a quick look at, you know, some of the precision and speed. Yet. So we have our, our, our dental line as well that we can cater to. And uh, finally, uh, we have the zip, which again comes for, you know, our rapid prototyping, but as well production. And also we have a, a, a zip that's dedicated to the dental industry. Uh, what's interesting about this uh, pr uh, printer um, is, again, the build size compared to some of the build sizes that we use on other desktop resin printers. A little bit more width than, uh, than say, uh, other traditional printers uh, in terms of the 7.7 on the width. And then on the depth, a little less depth. It's 4.5. However, on the Z-Ax, again, uh, 8.3. So if you're looking to do small parts, maybe small production line, or just simple rapid prototyping. Um, this is a great printer and who knows, we have, you know, you could potentially evaluate on having, you know, between five and 10 zips to load up on starting with your production line and then scaling up to industrial printers if, if the demand gets really, really heavy. So, um, I mean, this is the, the production, the line that we have. We have our printers right here in the back, the zip line, uh, the, the 400 and the zip. We also offer the 200 as well uh, to our customers. So we welcome anybody to come on site and or over the phone, we do video calls. Uh, we can evaluate, do evaluations with you, uh, do proof of concept to kind of validate uh, the quality of these printers, which is very impressive so far and very pleased. And uh, finally, before I pass it on to Sean, just a bit the wash and cure, the post-processing. So with resin printing, you're dunking it into an alcohol and then doing the wash and then simply doing the cure after. So maybe some of you might be wondering, you know, what's the time that's involved in this? Uh, the post-processing is uh, for the wash is two minutes. We do two two-minute washes on, on certain parts in alcohol. And then after that, we transition over to the cure, which is, it varies between, I believe, 25 and 30 minutes. Um, so you're getting record time prints. And then on top of that, a quick post-processing and just removing the support materials before putting it into the uh, cure. So, uh, and then finally, same thing, we have a wash and cure unit on the zip. Uh, this is very practical uh, for a work environment. It doesn't take too much room. Uh, the zip is also of the highest quality in terms of uh, the way it's manufactured. As you can see, it's aluminum 
uh, and it's a great structure, reliable. And the Nexa is a two for one package. You got the watt, you can change it in from a wash station into a curing station for your resins. And so uh, we also have that on site. So if you want to see the workflow, you're more than welcome to come by. So for that, uh, solid experts were really excited to be presenting this to our customers. And now, uh, you know, I'm going to pass it on to Sean. He's going to get more into uh, maybe answering the questions of why it's the fastest and and uh, and just get into the nitty gritty of, of the actual Nexa. So Sean, I'll, I'll pass it on to you. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much, James. Always good to hear somebody else other than the Nexa 3D person uh, talk nicely about our products. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so let's talk a little bit about what makes uh, makes our printers the fastest 3D printers in the world. Um, so I want to take you through a little bit of um, the evolution of resin 3D printers, if you will. So uh, if you're familiar with resin 3D printers, you probably know that they were invented back in the 80s um, with 3D systems. And, and uh, Chuck Hall, he invented the first SLA 3D printer. So that was kind of, you know, uh, it, it, it was it basically didn't change for a long time because it was patented in 20, 25 years. That was one of the only names in the game. Um, fast forward to, you know, the last 10 years or so. Um, these technologies have evolved a lot uh, because the patents have expired and desktop versions and, and whatnot have come out. Um, and so you saw, uh, first off, the inverted SLA 3D printer, which kind of allowed you to not have these massive vats of resin that you had to go through and, and, and have pulled the part down into. Now the part kind of comes out of it. So you just have this thin little layer of resin um, with some of these, which enabled desktop versions of these machines. Um, DLP. That uh, technology also evolved, obviously, comes from the projector industry and, and use, utilizing a chip. So whereas SLA was using a laser to kind of draw out um, each, each pixel, I should say, of the part, kind of like how a filament printer has to draw out every pixel with um, its extruder. Um, that's what SLA does. DLP took it to a projector, so now you're projecting entire layers and curing entire layers at one time. And then now we have MSLA 3D printers, which is what, um, which is at the core of Nexa 3D's technology. Um, so if you think of DLP as kind of the projector that maybe, you know, I'd say a pretty low percentage of people probably have at their houses, MSLA is kind of your your LED, you know. 4k tv that you have so it's uh instead of project using that projector dlp chip it's now you know using kind of the same technology as your tv with a with a full led backed array and kind of projecting the image that way so that the two um, printers to the right the dlp and the msla both benefit tremendously from speed because you cure that entire layer all together whereas the sla similar to filament 3D printing has to draw out every every dot of that entire print. So SLA is going to be a lot slower than both of those technologies. Um, so that already kind of increases the speed. Um, then if we look at our kind of take on that uh, specifically, and I, I guess I, I should have flipped this slide earlier because this, this shows is a little bit... Um, more of a visual representation. You see the uh, the laser drawing there with the SLA, the projector working here with the DLP, and then kind of you know this nice compact flat um, flat panel kind of projector here with the MSLA. Um, so you know one thing here you know you might notice right away there are not a lot of moving parts when it comes to an MSLA 3D printer. Pretty much the only thing that's going to be moving here. Is the is the z-axis moving up and down? Everything else is just light projecting, um, so it's a very very simple product in regard to to maintenance and and wear. And um, you, you're not going to have a lot of stuff breaking down on you there, um, which is nice. Um, so our take on MSLA 3D printing at Nexa 3D it's called LSPC, and that stands for uh, lubricated sublayer photo curing. Um, so how that works, it's a combination of, of some of these um, 
these items you can see here. So the the um, so one of the most important things is our LSPC membrane, um, otherwise known as the Everlast II membrane. Um, so this is a this is sits atop of the LCD screen, and it's a clear um, almost like a drum like uh, membrane. Mm -hmm. So if you like flick it, it sounds like a drum uh, reverberates, and that that allows the print to pull off because remember it's pulling it out of the resin it's actually pulling it off of the bottom of the resin vat so it's curing right on the bottom and when it pulls it off you can imagine it's gonna it's stuck to there initially so you gotta you gotta be able to get it off somehow and different printers use different technologies to deal with that some printers kind of have have a movement um, our membrane is pretty simple it, it allows it to peel off really with uh, a really low force um, so that's that's a that's actually a proprietary aspect of it. Um, another part of the technology is our LCD mask. So it was a really high quality 4K um, 4K uh, LCD mask. So that's going to obviously allow you know the the light pixels through to draw out the the correct part. And um, there's anti-aliasing built into that. So we already have pixels that are about um, just 52 microns in width. So if you think about each pixel that you're dealing with, the anti-aliasing, you can actually dim those pixels so you can get sub-pixel resolution and allows for you know very smooth parts without kind of the stair-stepping that you would otherwise get if you didn't have that in the software. Um, then we also have, you know, the next, I guess the next part of this is is the LED array, which is down here, and then you have the collimating lenses array. So that's going to, this is a pretty high powered LED um, light. It's 405 nanometers, so it's it's actually visible light. A lot of people call this UV light. Um, it actually sits, 405 is actually in the visible light spectrum, although it's at the very bottom, which is why it is that kind of bluish purplish color. Um, so uh, but it is, you know, it's kind of close to the close to the edge of the UV spectrum. Um, so that's going to project up through these lenses, and these lenses are going to make sure that light is super clean that hits that LCD mask. So you get the most light. You know, you want to you want that completely bathed, um, but you also want that light completely pointing upward because if it's if it's kind of spilling over at an angle at all, you're going to get some weird things happening where. You know, if you have it like leaking out to the to another pixel, that pixel is going to get like double the curing, which is not good. You don't want it to over cure. Um, so like stuff like that. And actually, you see those issues in DLP and also and also SLA, where the the laser or the projector has to is kind of it's either projecting out, so you have this weird angled light, and that that um, that will create artifacts on the prints. It reduces the dimensional accuracy, stuff like that. So that's why that's actually why this MSLA technology is some of the most accurate out there because it's just light that's going directly up to where you want it. Um, and then lastly, you have thermal management. So we've done a lot of work to make sure um, you know if you're using these this high power light engine right under your resin, like you you don't want it to get too warm. Um, that can actually inhibit curing. So um, it's really important how you consider that, and our engineers have worked very hard to make sure that in both the NX series and also the Zip, um, you you can get that hot, very high-powered LED without kind of cooking the resin. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of a quick spin through what we call LSPC technology. All right. Um, so, what does that? How does that translate into speed? Um, well, we already kind of have talked a little bit about filament 3D printing, a little bit about SLA, and that's what I'm going to compare this to because I think that's what most people are familiar with. Um, and I've taken, I've focused on desktop 3D printers for this and really professional desktop 3D printers that are in about the same price category. So here we've uh, got the Ultimaker S3, very popular 3D printer. Um, so and we're we're looking at what you can print in a single eight hour work day. So in this scale engine model, uh, scale model engine block, I basically what I did, I basically maxed out the um, the zips build volume and and used the same uh, same size for all all of these printers. 
Um, I also use the fastest materials for all the printers and the same 200 micron layer height setting. So basically the fastest speeds you could do, you know, in standard settings without like tweaking every, you know, customizing every single thing. Um, so what you see here with the S3, you can print about uh, almost a quarter of that engine block. With the Form 3 Plus, you can actually print that full build volume engine block in one day. With the Zip, you could actually print nine of these in one day, um, one eight hour day. So a uh, huge disparity there in speed. And that's because of, like I said, that we talked about that edge to edge, edge, to edge speed, but also our LSPC technology that makes it even faster. Um, similarly, if you want to print multiple parts, um, you can see a breakdown. You know, this would be like filling your printer up with these little pieces. Actually, I've got I've got um, some of these printed out here that are stacked, so you can stack these parts um, really well on our printers. I, that's actually pretty hard to do. I've heard with some of the SLA printers, um, definitely really hard to do with the with the Ultimaker. But you know, just for theory's sake, we lo we look at the speeds. You can see you can print about um, seven of these in a day with the S3, about 27 with the Form 3 Plus and about 253 with the Zip. So again, a huge, huge disparity in speed. And that's just gonna, for, you know, if, if, you're, uh, if you're a designer and you're prototyping, that just means more iterations in the same day. So something like this engine block, you know, you as a designer or an engineer could do, you know, four or five, six iterations in a day. That's probably not that likely because that means you're going to be really dialed in, you know, designing and cha making changes in SolidWorks. More likely is that you have a, a team, right? And you're not the only one who needs to use the printer. So now instead of needing maybe six SLA printers, you could have one zip that could service that whole team and everybody could still get their print jobs done in a day. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about the ecosystem. James already kind of went over the, the X-Wash, the X-Cure, and also the Zips Wash and Cure solution. Um, it's not too dissimilar from a lot of other uh, uh, companies, but we do have our own software and our own post-processing um, solution. Um, so on the software side, obviously, first, you're going to start with your file. You're going to bring it into Nexa X software. Uh, now, Nexa X is low key, a very powerful software. Obviously, I know that a lot of people probably haven't even heard of Nexa 3D, and that's fine. Um, you know, it's it's our job to get the word out there. The, the product team has done a very good job of delivering an awesome product. So we're still trying to get the word out there, but, you know, we do live demos to show off the speed and, and what's really capable before your eyes. Um, and I think it blows people away. And the Nexa X, um, so it's yeah, it's really powerful. You can do stuff like, um, you know, like like Z stacking. So you can create these if you're doing production parts and you're doing like small parts and you want to do hundreds of them or thousands of them on the NXZ. Mm -hmm. You can do all of that in there. Um, you can do customized supports. You can go in and manually edit individual support nodes if you want to. You know, say you print the same thing again over and over again and and you want those supports to be really dialed in. Um, obviously, it's got all our materials in there, and you can create custom material profiles to use the open resins as well. Um, so that's Nexa X. Once you have your part set up and sliced, you can send it directly to your printer from Nexa X. So it is connected. All the printers are going to be connected to the internet. You can see status and monitor and see which printers are available and what kind of resin they have loaded and everything like that send it over, you run your print. In this case, we've got the zip. Um, and then once you do that, say your print takes, maybe it takes uh, 20 minutes, maybe it takes an hour. Um, low key, impressive fact, the zip can could print an, an, its entire 4.8 liter build volume in, the, in a couple of our high speed or fastest resins in just one hour. So, you know, you could do a part, you know, pretty substantial in just one hour. Send that. So once you printed that in an hour, then you're going to take it out. You're going to run it through the wash. You're going to run it through the cure, and that takes about 30 to 40 minutes, roughly. And then you've got, you know, pretty much a finished part there. So, um, you know, it really is a pretty straightforward solution. 
Um, and actually a lot of, while I, I do see solutions for a lot of the desktop competitors, actually in the industrial side of the resin space, a lot of the uh, a lot of our competitors, you know, who make who make DLP or or other kinds of high speed printers don't have their own solutions, which is which is kind of interesting. You just got to go buy something off the shelf, and you know, they're <laughs> the simplest things that are way overpriced. And and ours are really big, so if you get like the NXE, you can see that this can hold entire NXE 400 millimeter tall prints. Um, so you can, you know, you don't have to break it up into sections like you might have to do with some other ones. Um, all right, so that's kind of the ecosystem, the workflow. Um, oh yeah, we do have this, we have this video showing the software. Um, forgot we had that. So just let that run through, and you can see some of the features here. So, um, you know, it, like I said, it is it is a really nice software, um, albeit you know, kind of under the radar just because I think Nexa 3D is still kind of, we're still making a name for uh, for mm -hmm. our company, but, you know, you can go right on there. You can array parts. Um, you can do customize the settings if you mm -hmm. want to get, you can edit the node points if you want to customize those supports a little bit more. Um, obviously, this is running a slice, generating that package. Um, it even like you know even shows like the color of the resin you're using, which I just found out the other day. Um, so the gray part will show up gray if you have that resin loaded, or the black part black, um, which is just like little Easter eggs. And then yeah, you can manage all your prints from right there. So that's a that's a little sneak peek of Nexa X. Uh, hopefully James can do a deeper dive one of these days, uh, showing how to really use that software. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for sure, we can uh, come back uh, on that and, and do kind of a a quick uh, difference of uh, you know the base model versus uh, some of the parameters that you can do uh, on the uh, on the upgraded version. On the uh, pro version, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, cool. Um, just have a couple more things to go through here. I know we're we're running a, sh a little short on time, but do want to mention our materials. James already talked a lot about them. There's over 26 materials that we have validated that we sell and solid experts will sell um, specifically for our products, but it's also an open platform so you can use whatever you want. James uh, picked the flexible. I've got my little squish ball dust toy here. Um, you yeah. know, this is, this is our X-Flex. It's a nice like silicone uh, analog and all these, all these parts come out isotropic. So you know, X, Y, Z strength is uniform. You know, you squeeze this thing in like a TPU on an FDM printer and that thing is just cracking like all, like nobody's business. So, um, <laughs> you know, another another eye opener for me. You can see some of our materials there. Um, and I'll just fly through some of these case studies. So you'll one thing you'll notice with Nexa, most of our case studies are actually production related and they're actually, a lot of these are replacement injection molded parts or cast urethane parts previously, um, which I don't remember experiencing in the FDM world. I remember a lot of our case studies were more jigs and fixtures or a lot more um, like one-off kind of custom parts that were like designed to be printed originally. But yeah. I think that just speaks to like the print quality and the performance that they can step right in and kind of replace injection molded parts. Um, so with with uh, applied rapid technologies here, this is an example. Um, actually, not the XPP, but our XCE resin. This is an outdoor application. Um, these are printed parts that are um, basically they they had to reverse engineer these um, kind of outmoded um, joysticks that were no longer being manufactured by their vendor. So they sourced it through the service bureau, who mass produces these now. Um, on their NXE 400. And their previous process was actually using 3D systems printers to just print a mold to then pour urethane resin in and cast it. Now they don't even have to do that molding process. They're, these parts are good enough that they can just print them and put them into the field, which is pretty cool. Um, another example is actually a zip manufacturing story. This, this customer was able to onshore. Um, they were previously offshoring to Taiwan 
I had to put in 10,000 part minimum order quantities. Um, and, you know, they were spent, you know, putting, putting up $250,000 for that inventory to get the, get that per part cost down. They actually got a zip and they, they switched from this manufactured brass in Taiwan to these printed parts. Um, and the parts actually, they did full testing of the tensile forces on these guitar strings. Mm -hmm. They hold up fine, so now they're they're manufacturing those on demand. They don't have to hold on to two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of inventory if they need to change the design. It doesn't matter because they don't have. They're just printing these on demand as their orders come in. So um, that's pretty cool. Alstom, massive rail, uh, you know, rolling stock manufacturers. They like to say they make high speed trains for you know all the biggest. Um, rail, you know, cons com uh, I should say consumer rail companies around the world, Amtrak here in the US, but obviously that's small potatoes, Europe, you know, all their high speed trains pretty much are made. And they had these, um, a lot of their trains are like 30, 40 years old, they're aging. So they need quick solutions for their customers to replace parts. Um, this fo foot rest here was a part that was failing. Um, these had been in in there for 30 years um they were able to um when they they got our printers they were able to use our xabs to print those um they they actually didn't have to put any supports on the file and they were basically finished when they did it and they they want to provide the fastest turnaround to their customers so if their customer has these foot rests that are breaking they want to be able to replace them within like a week or two um they can print they can print like eight of these out on one build plate in like eight hours. So um, a very quick turnaround for them. Very nice uh, replacement part example. And lastly, Pepsi. This is a super cool one if you haven't seen this before. Um, but these uh, these tooling inserts are 3D printed using our X-Peak material. Um, so they have this kind of clamshell uh, mold casing and then they can change the designs with this insert. And this X-Peak material can take over 15,000 shots in a blow molding machine. So it's super high temp, super high pressure. Um, you know, obviously it's going to bring their costs way down. They don't have to machine every, you know, any designs or, um, you know, if they're, if they're changing, they don't have to retool all of that. So, um, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of cool applications that you can do with our tech. And, I guess uh, uh, yeah. I guess now if, uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, I'm not sure Oliver if there's a if you've seen any questions come up in the chat or if anybody has any questions for us. Okay, so uh, I mean for now uh, I guess uh, it's pretty pretty self uh, self-explanatory. Uh, um, so if anybody has. Um, any any further questions or wants to set up uh, a demo with us uh, to kind of evaluate their own personal project, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me at uh, J uh, O'Farrell um, O F A R R E L L at Solid Experience. I know it's uh, experts. You see here it's Solid Experts, uh, but it's Solid Experience. Solid simply an x experience.com and uh, feel free to reach out and we can schedule uh, a meeting uh, if you're tuning in from the united states uh, we do have representatives in the united states as well so we can uh, get someone uh, connected with you as well um, so for the rest uh, thank you thank you for tuning in today and uh, looking forward to hearing from you and your projects and uh, evaluating uh, a potential uh, potential uh, a next to 3D uh, implementing into your company uh, soon. So uh, thank you again, and, and thanks Sean for for tuning in and sharing some of the stories and and a bit about uh, what makes Nexus so special. Yeah, thanks for having me, James, and thanks everybody uh, for tuning in. All right, perfect. Have a good one. Take care.